This is the second set of notes, notes about cell structure. In this section, we'll talk about nucle the nucleus, ribosomes, and the endomembrane system. The nucleus is the cell's command center. It has the DNA in it, which is called chromatin, except during cell division. During cell division, the DNA coils up tightly to make the recognizable chromosomes that you've seen pictures of. But most of the time in the life of the cell, the DNA is spread out and looks like just some granular material inside the nucleus. So what happens in the nucleus is that the main job of the nucleus is to direct protein synthesis. That's what the DNA does. The nucleus is enclosed by a nuclear envelope. The nuclear envelope is a double membrane. That means it's a double phospholipid bilayer, so two bilayers back to back. The membrane controls the flow of materials into and out of the nucleus. The DNA has to stay inside the nucleus and does stay inside the nucleus except during cell division when the nuclear membrane dissolves away. But it has to send messengers out. It needs uh, molecules to come in, nucleotides and so forth to make messenger RNA or to make copies of the DNA or whatever. And so uh, the, those things have to go in and out through the pores in the surface of the nuclear envelope. Here we see a picture of the of the nucleus. Okay, over here on the right, you've got the nucleus diagram showing that it's got this double membrane around it in the nuclear envelope. It's got the chromatin, the spread out DNA. Inside the nucleus, there's a darker, denser region called the nucleolus, which is where ribosome, ribosomal RNA is, is synthesized. We've got the membrane around here with the pores in it, which control the entry and exit of molecules from the nucleus into the nucleus. Here you see an electron micrograph of the nucleus of a cell compared to the diagram, so you can see how they fit. The nucleolus, again, is where the ribosomal RNA is made. This is the type of RNA that makes up the ribosomes along with some protein. The ribosomes are the source or the site of protein synthesis. The nucleus directs protein synthesis by making messenger RNA, a different kind of RNA, that has the instructions for the protein assembly. In other words, it has the instructions to tell the ribosomes which order to put the amino acids in to make the protein that is being coded for. The ribosomes are found in the cytoplasm and attached to the endoplasmic reticulum. The ones in the cytoplasm are called free ribosomes. The ones attached the, to the ER, or endoplasmic reticulum, are called the bound ribosomes. What happens on the ribosomes is that they read the instructions on the messenger RNA and use those instructions to put the protein together with the correct amino acid sequence to make the protein. This picture shows you the location of ribosomes. There are ribosomes in the cytoplasm as well as attached to the endoplasmic reticulum, which generally surrounds the nucleus. Okay, and here's a micrograph showing you the location of some bound ribosomes on the surfaces of the endoplasmic reticulum and the free ribosomes in the space in between. The diagram over here shows you basically what a, a ribosome looks like. It has two subunits, and the messenger RNA travels through the center part here, and um, other molecules come in to put together the protein. We'll learn more about how proteins are put together in our unit about DNA. The endomembrane system is a, one of the major parts of the, of the interior of the cell. This includes not only the nuclear envelope, but the endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi apparatus, lysosomes, vacuoles, and the plasma membrane. So all of these things are involved in this endomembrane system. These organelles work together to make and distribute and store and export the molecules that are needed by the cell. The system divides the cell into separate functional compartments, and we're going to talk about what happens in those compartments. Before we go on, let me point out to you that, this, that the prefix endo means inside, okay? So when you see the term endo, that means that whatever it is talking about is inside, whatever the structure is, usually inside the cell. The endoplasmic reticulum is the factory where a lot of these biomolecules are synthesized, the things that we talked about in our unit on the molecules of cells, the proteins, the lipids. Those components are put together in the endoplasmic reticulum. There are two main kinds of endoplasmic reticulum. We usually call it ER because that's easier to say and spell than endoplasmic reticulum. So the smooth ER does not have the attached ribosomes. 
in the smooth ER, lipids are put together, oils, phospholipids, steroids, other kinds of lipid molecules that are needed by cells. The smooth ER in liver cells processes drugs, alcohol, and other potentially harmful substances in a process called detoxification to make them less harmful to the cell. And the smooth ER also stores ions like calcium ions that are necessary for the proper functioning of muscle and nerve cells. So lots of things going on in the smooth ER. This diagram shows you the same cells type diagram we saw before and the endomembrane system, including the ER. Notice that it starts off right outside the nuclear envelope. We have a series of folded membranes and channels. The rough ER is right here on the outside near the nucleus. Notice the ribosomes on the surface. And the smooth ER is a little bit farther out usually. The smooth ER oftentimes looks like tubes rather than channels, or to, uh, rather the channels that you see in the rough ER. The rough ER has ribosomes attached to its surface. That's why we call it rough. It kind of looks like sandpaper with the sand on the surface. In the rough ER, a lot of protein is made, as you can probably figure out from the fact that it has ribosomes on the surface. Uh, the, mod the proteins are produced by the ER. They're modified into the correct shapes. The, the subunits are put together. The, the secondary and tertiary structure takes, takes place. Um, they make uh, proteins for other membranes, for other organelles, for secretion by the cell. Um, if, if it's a cell that produces something that needs to be secreted by the body. And these modified proteins are packaged into vesicles, or little carrier um, membranes within the cell, which carry them to the Golgi apparatus for further processing. The Golgi apparatus, sometimes it's also called the Golgi body or the Golgi complex. Oftentimes cells have many of these, not just one. A Golgi body or a Golgi apparatus is a stack of flattened sacs. This is kind of like a warehouse and finishing factory for the products of the cell. The, Golgi, the enzymes in the Golgi modify the, the carbohydrate parts of certain proteins called glycoproteins that have both a protein and a, and a carbohydrate part. It prepares proteins for export from the cell. If you think about analogizing the parts of a cell to a factory, the Golgi apparatus is kind of like the shipping department or the post office part of the factory. Here's a picture of the Golgi apparatus, a series of flattened sacks that are stacked on top of each other. When you look at it in cross section, it often looks like a stack of pancakes or uh, something like that. Um, here's a diagram showing you the Golgi apparatus in a cell. Okay? We have transport vesicles bringing the proteins from the ER to the Golgi. The molecules are transported through the various membranes of the Golgi apparatus where they are modified and packaged, and then they are transported from the Golgi either to a storage place within the cell, to the cell membrane so they can be secreted, etc. If we can show that we can say that there's a transport side or the receiving side and the shipping side of the Golgi apparatus. In this diagram, this would be the receiving side and this would be the shipping side with all the vesicles here. Lysosomes and vacuoles are two other things you often find in cells, animal cells in particular. Lysosomes are also called breakdown bodies. That lyso part comes from the word lice that we talked about with hydrolysis, which means breaking down, and the some part means body. Okay? These are basically sacs of digestive enzymes. They are very useful for a lot of recycling stuff that goes on in the cell. They break down worn out cell parts. They digest ingested cells or food particles and break them down into the uh, nutrients that the cell can use for various purposes. The vacuoles are kind of like storage closets. They store food or water for later use. Now, plant cells have large central vacuoles that store sugar, sugars and starches within the cell. And it's very characteristic to see those very large vacuoles in the center of a plant cell. Some single-celled organisms also have special vacuoles that collect excess water to expel it from the cell. These are called contractile vacuoles. Here we have a, a picture showing the progress of a lysosome using to break down a damaged mitochondrion. It'll fuse with the with a vesicle that's covering or vacuole that is covering or surrounding the worn out cell part. And then the enzymes that are present in there will break down the uh, mitochondrion into parts that can be reused. On the left here we have a plant cell with its large central vacuole and the chloroplast and the nucleus found there. And then here is a single-celled organism 
a paramecium that lives in the water. These organisms often have contractile vacuoles that actually absorb excess water since they live in water and can take on too much water and then expel it from the cell. There's another organelle called a peroxisome that you find in both plant cells and animal cells. These contain crystalline enzymes called oxidases that detoxify harmful chemicals like alcohol. It breaks down the alcohols into hydrogen peroxide briefly and then into water plus oxygen. Uh, peroxisomes have, uh, also have a membrane that contain this oxidase crystal inside. The crystalline core uh, is often in the shape of uh, a polygonal picture. Here's a, here is a, uh, an electron micrograph showing you a peroxisome with its crystalline core. They're still learning a lot of things about these, but they're very necessary in cells to help break down some of these harmful compounds. Uh, all of these systems, the endomembrane systems, are all interconnected, either by touching each other or by transport from one to the other. We have the nuclear envelope here, surrounded by the rough ER and the smooth ER, vesicles that transport protein products from the ER to the Golgi apparatus, where they're processed, modified, packages, packaged, either stored in the cell or sent to the membrane to um, be exported from the cell. This is how lysosomes are made okay, from the Golgi apparatus. This concludes this section of notes about some of the organelles in the cell. Uh, be sure to complete the Google form that accompanies this. And that's all.